How you doing guys? I'm in the Colorado Springs Military Museum and here's a display you guys never seen because I just finished it. I've been working on it this winter and uh, this is the home front, right? The home front in America and uh, civil defense was a big thing back then and uh, they gave out uh, ration uh, books, you know, for gas and food and uh, check out this display. You don't get any better than this. Okay, so anyway, yeah, this is emergency water that they handed out, you know, to the, uh, to the citizens. Uh, if you wanted to join civil defense, you would be wearing a uniform like this, see with the different armbands. And uh, let me show you what the uh, ration books look like. You put, you put in for these ration books from the government, and uh, I'm going to open this up and show it to you. Okay, this is the postcard that you send in to get there to uh, apply. See that? And uh, tells you, you know, all the instructions, how to apply for food stamps or, you know, the uh, ration books, which equals food stamps and gasoline stamps. And this is the book you would receive in the mail. And uh, let me open it up, show you what the stamps look like. Okay, I was real lucky to get all this stuff. Yeah, these are gas stamps, and then they had food stamps. Uh, this is what the food stamps look like. See, they're green and red. And the black ones, like I just showed you, for gas. Okay, so all the big cities like L.A., Chicago, uh, New York City, uh, they all had uh, air raid sirens, right? And when the air raid siren goes on, uh, you put the helmet on, you, uh, you, you get under the counter, you get under uh, anything, you go in the basement, and uh, they handed out these gas masks. See that? And that's what these sirens would uh, sound like. This is the civilian gas mask that the public would have uh, been issued. And this is the original box that the gas mask came in. See that? So uh, when those sirens go on, that means there's going to be an air raid. Air raid! And the thing is, get your family, get cover, because you never know if the Nazis are coming, uh, the Japanese are coming to World War II, and that's what the sirens sounded like in the big cities. Okay, so you guys are going to see this display when you come visit my museum. Okay guys, check out all these different uniforms. I picked up another probably 60 more uniforms and mannequins over the winter, and more helmets, and more guns, uh, really more everything. Almost every mannequin here has got a... Uh, an M1 Grant, 3006 caliber, eight shots, semi-automatic, or they had M1 carbines. Yeah, check out all the different mannequins. I got every uniform the U.S. government made 1939 to 45. Very big accomplishment. Over 5,000 helmets. Okay, over here, this is one of my six machine gun bunkers. And, uh... I'll tell you about this in a minute. Hey, follow me over here. We got all Purple Heart uniforms with uh, pictures of the soldiers that wore that uniform and got a Purple Heart and got shot during World War II. Okay, most of this stuff is all the personal stuff that they uh, carried in World War II. I got every boot and every shoe they wore, 1939 to 45. Here's all the medic equipment over here. Uh, 75% of these guns actually were used in World War II. I got them from widows from all around America. We show how the landmines work. Uh, we got flare guns here. Here's the medic, World War II, 1939 to 45. We got the tanker with the Colt 1911. In this cabinet, every bayonet, every machete, 1939 to 45. All the stuff on the pegboard here is from the 10th Mountain Division. I have every boot and every shoe with the original dated shoe polish. See that? Here's the D-Day mannequin with the M5 gas mask. This is exactly the way they dressed when they came off the landing craft, June 6, 1944, on Omaha and Utah Beach. Okay, we got uh, first aid kits, fully equipped. Brand new. See that? This kit here is probably 80 years old. Okay, here's all the medic equipment, the morphine, uh, all the medic stuff that they used back then, the band-aids. Okay, over here, Lucky Strike, Lucky Green goes to war cigarettes. They only made those Lucky Green cigarettes for four years. Those cigarettes are worth a lot of money to other collectors. Very, very rare. 
Okay, over here, the Liberator handgun. This is the gun that they threw out of the airplane so uh, the, the civilians could liberate their country. The Liberator handgun. The Chevy company, GMC, got an order in 1943 to make one million of those throwaway guns. Okay, now I'm going to tell you about my machine gun bunker here. And keep in mind, these are real bullets and real guns. You won't see that at any government museum. Okay, over here, this is exactly the way it would have looked anywhere in Europe uh, in World War II. You don't get any more realistic than this. We got the hand grenades, we got the flares, we got the machine guns, we got the uh, 19, 19, 30, 06, we got the M1 Grants. This one here's got the grenade launcher on it. That's an M1 car beam. We got John over there. See John over there? He's looking at a map. That's an original D-Day map that was given to all the platoon leaders to show how to get from the Normandy beaches to Berlin. This is a M2 50 caliber machine gun. I have 16 of them. We got the pup tent over here. See Mike and Jay, they're in the pup tent. See, they're taking a nap. They, uh, they had watch all night. They got their underwear hanging up on the line. Okay, we got Jake over here. He's on the switchboard. Check it out. He's got a Thompson machine gun. See that? That's the uh, switchboard back then. And uh, we got the uh, stoves. We got all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, when you guys come see my museum, I'm going to tell you all about all this stuff. Uh, I have a total of over 1,600 uniform mannequins. I even have mannequins smoking cigarettes. Everything is detailed to the max. Nobody can make this any better than what I did here. Okay, we got the bullets. They're all dated 1939 to 45. Uh, these are uh, rocket grenades. Uh, we got flares. We got the. Uh, oh! tell you, boy, that was scary. Luckily, the Luftwaffe, they missed the bombing target, and uh, everybody's all right. You never know what's going to happen at the Colorado Springs Military Museum. You have to be ready. That's why we have helmets all over the place. You never know when they're going to attack. Okay, guys, that's it for me. I'll see you guys this summer. You guys are going to have a great time. I guarantee it.